As the indifferent moon illuminates his dark surroundings, a man wakes up in a haze. It's odd. The fixtures in his house all seem to be lower than usual. Everything feels out of place, but he couldn't figure out why. He stumbles to his bathroom, and when fragments of his chiseled face comes into view, shock coats his system, and he can only say one thing. Who the heck is that person? Now, let's replace this perfectly respectable bathroom with a more stinky looking one from two weeks ago. A bulky delinquent named Tae Sung's in the middle of roughing up Park Hyung Sok, who's on all fours in front of him. He's got a lot of expectations for Hyung Sok here. First off, Tae Sung expects regular payments from him. Doesn't matter if Hyung Sok already paid him a lot the other day, he can't be slacking with the amount. Though he doesn't owe this bruiser anything, it's bark or get sparked. So Hyung Sok meekly agrees with everything he says. Hell, he's straight up barked. When Tae Sung wasn't happy about him answering with words, Tae Sung's pals cruelly mock Hyung Sok as he keeps barking and crawling around like an overzealous dog. As for the big man himself, he isn't satisfied. No, sir. This criminal son of a gun bashes his foot against Hyung Sok's head and apologizes for calling him a dog when he's a pig. He kicks him on the stomach before menacingly approaching him to ask why a pig is barking like a dog. With his pride and dignity being forced into torpor, Hyung Sok squeals like a pig and starts rolling around like one unprompted. Tae Sung girl and his buddy are having the time of their miserable lives poking fun at the poor guy. But the girl suddenly stops to accuse him of peeking under her skirt. Pissed, Tae Sung grabs Hyung Sok by the hair and wails at him even more. You belong on the bottom rung until the day you die, trash. He snaps. In that moment, only one thought filled Hyung Sok's head. I want to die. He carries his misery all the way to his dingy apartment. A humming Hyung Sok tries to feign normalcy, but all he could think about is a sad little life. His kindly mother arrives, commenting on how lovely his voice is before apologizing apologizing for being late. She makes him ramen, and Hyung Sok grows irritable when he sees it since it has an egg. He told her countless of times not to add egg in his ramen since it's making him fat, and his mother only apologizes as it must have slipped her mind. Hyung Sok just eats the ramen, hurting his cheek in the process. He remembers the face of his bullies, and defeatedly, the boy asks to transfer schools, saying that everyone there is smarter than him. Getting good grades is hard. His mother sadly answers that it was hard for her to get settled there and to find a place that cheap. Besides, you'll lose touch with all your school friends if you transfer, she adds. If only she knew. Hyung Sok can't take it anymore. In his frustration, he yells at his mother, asking if it's his fault they're poor. What use are friends if I can't get good grades? His mother wouldn't resent him, and yet he can't bring himself to tell her about the reality of his hellish school life. Hyung Sok punches a hole through the wall, and in an instant, he realizes what he's done. But instead of apologizing, he just doubles down. What have you ever done for me anyway? Hyung Sok asks, before walking away to cry in his room. The following day before PE class, Tae Sung and his friends compete to see who can kick a soccer ball directly into Hyung Sok's face. Tae Sung goes first, but the poor boy dodges it, causing the ball to miss. The bully's vexed since he's bet on this. Maesik grins and gets in position. With impressive form, he puts enough force in his kick to send the ball flying into Hyung Sok's face. The propulsion's enough to send the boy flying into the fence and landing face first into the dirt. As Maesik celebrates his victory, Hyung Sok begs Tae Sung for forgiveness and even offers to pay for the debt, only to get punched in the gut. Everyone one just laughs as the victim is humiliated by a series of slaps. Suddenly, Mrs. Park comes charging toward them. She checks on her son's unfortunate condition and curses Tae Song, hitting his arm in the process. The bullies try to make an excuse that they're just playing. She isn't buying it. The others whisper about Hyung Sok being a crybaby and calling his mom to save him. Hearing this, the boy feels even more embarrassed and cusses her out for the outburst. Everyone's a little surprised he can talk to his mom like that. Seriously, what's wrong with these kids? Later that day, Hyung Sok comes home to his mom sitting on the floor. He wants to apologize, but she gently cuts him to explain that she's already been fixing his transfer. The reason she was at his school was that she just finished discussing it with his teacher. He'll have to survive alone there since she has to stay for work, but she won't forget to send money over regularly. Regularly. With that settled, he no longer has anything to worry about. Hyung Sok feels remorseful but can't find the courage to say anything. Now exploring a new city, Hyung Sok feels more optimistic than ever. Despite his shabby apartment, an independent life definitely sounds good. He ventures to the nearby city shopping districts to buy some stuff. It's filled with stylish people who capture his eye. It's time to be reborn. It's not long before he bumps into a chic girl, Mi Jin. She politely apologizes, a stark contrast from what he's experienced up to this point. This gives Hyung Sok a 
a little confidence in building a new identity for himself, so he goes for an out-of-character response. He arrogantly flips his hair, puts on a forced smile, and checks on her creepily. The iffy expression on her face shows us that his depiction of cool hasn't worked at all. It's giving off stalker vibes. Our boy fumbled the bag. Jin Seong, Mi Jin's textbook delinquent date, suddenly arrives to pick her up. Without hesitation, she tries to drag him away to defuse the tension. It actually almost works. That is, until Jin Seong is insulted by Hyung Sok's sheepish smile. Hyung Sok scrambles to explain what happened with Mi Jin genuinely backing him up. Tired of being the victim, Hyung Sok clenches his fist, which captures the boyfriend's attention. He calls the fist out and we're back to square one with the cowardly Hyung Sok. Our MC does his best to make excuses, but these are cut short as Jin Seong's clenched fist makes contact with his face. The force is strong enough to send the boy flying. Again, Mi Jin tries to stop her date, but the man continues the bloody beatdown. A sizable crowd forms around them, though instead of helping, they simply begin taking recordings of current events. It's both a physically and emotionally traumatizing experience. Videos of the beatdown go viral on the internet. Finally alone in his apartment, Young Suk cries as he reads the dehumanizing insults in the comment section. Regardless of where he is, life hasn't changed at all. Left questioning his self-worth, he heartbreakingly cries himself to sleep. We're back to the start. A little magic happens later that night. Young Suk awakes and stands up, only for his head to hit the ceiling. The sink is unusually lower too. But the weirdest thing is what he finds in the mirror. A muscular, beautiful young man staring back at him. Whose reflection is this? He looks back into his room and finds his chubby self slumbering peacefully on the floor. Discounting this as one of those dreamlike out-of-body experiences, he slaps his other body in the face. Alright, he's back to his normal body. Chubby arms, stubby legs. Complete. Whew, that was a good dream. Although, he turns to the other side and finds his handsome self sleeping. Obviously taken aback, Hyung Sok shakes the body and passes out. He finally comes comes too, but this time, back in the charming body. Hyung Sok panics and tries to call 911, but something stops him. His chubby self was already exposed and humiliated on the internet. Determined to make a change, Hyung Sok decides to appear in school as this stunning young lad. The sun rises to greet a new day. In J1 High School, blondie Kim Seol Byom revels in the crowd's praises as the school hottie. Absolutely confident in a repeat, well, not until Hyung Sok steps into campus. Even the self-confident boy is starstruck by his presence. Actually, every living soul in the area gazes at the new student like an artwork. Is he a celebrity? Easy paparazzi. When the teacher introduces Hyung Sok to the class, everyone instantly falls in love with him. Even the dudes are speechless in admiration. Hyung Sok feels extremely nervous from everyone's stares. He remembers his past first days of school where literally everyone was antagonistic toward him. Well, things might be different this time. Checking who his seatmate is, it's, uh-oh, Jin Seong. Yep, the guy who humiliated in public yesterday. Even Mi Jin is in the same class. Oh, he's screwed. Thankfully, Jin Seong doesn't seem to recognize him and even greets him first. It doesn't take very long before classmate Han Yul flirtatiously shoots her shot. It seems like that's her usual MO with attractive guys on campus. Jin Seong surprisingly shushes her away from Hyung Sok. What a devilish woman, he thinks to himself. It's good that his own Mi Jin wouldn't do that. Or would she? He finds his flustered girlfriend staring a hole into the new kid. For this reason, Jin Seong hates the handsome Hyung Sok too. It's destiny. Lunchtime, Hyung Seok slowly enters the cafeteria stopping time for just about anyone with the privilege of looking at this fine specimen. Out of nowhere, Hanyul appears to inform him on where each course sits. However, she's curious why Hyung Sok chose a fashion major of all things. The real reason is that it was his previous teacher's advice befitting his mediocre grades, but he simply tells Hanyul he thinks it'll be fun. In class, Hyung Sok feels drowsy and wonders if it's because of his activities the day before. He was apparently practicing a stride, appearing to others like a model catwalk practice. Fascinated with how light he was, he got a bit carried away and accidentally did a cartwheel. What the? He ended up enjoying this newfound athleticism and running until nighttime. That's biting him in the back today as he dozes off during class. Suddenly, Hyung Sok wakes up in his apartment. It's his other body. In a panic, he struggles to force himself back to sleep to return to his handsome self. Han Yul finally surprises his other body in class, reeling his consciousness back in. The jolted man scares Han Yul but wholeheartedly thanks her for calling his attention. On the other hand, little Missy over here is giving meaning to simple acts of gratitude. That night, Hyung Sok comes across a convenience store looking for part-time workers. The moment the owner laid his eyes on him, he knew he had hit the jackpot. With a super handsome cashier, hordes of females will be happy to spend their money here. Cha-ching! In an attempt to hire him immediately, the manager, Mr. Park Jom Jang, forgoes all requirements and gives him an offer. However, the handsome man clarifies that it's for his friend. Wait, he has friends? Oh wait, yeah! 
friend, his chubby self. The non-conventionally attractive version of himself returns to the store. This time, Mr. Park's expression is not so welcoming. He tries turning him away with the excuse that he can't take high school students, but that didn't seem to be an issue at all earlier. Wanting to impress his potential boss, Hyung Suk effortlessly identifies all cigarette brands on the shelf. Being an errand boy has its uses, and so he's hired, although his pay is lower than what Mr. Park promised his handsome version. Pretty privilege 101, folks. As soon as Mr. Park leaves, Hyung Suk thinks about his body switching schedule. It's getting expensive since both bodies independently need food. His thought process is interrupted as three customers arrive, and he quickly recognizes them as delinquents from his class. Han Gyul asks for four cigarettes and presents a shoddy fake ID. Despite his persistence, Hyung Suk remains firm that he can't comply with the request. Unexpectedly, Jin Sung walks in and recognizes Hyung Suk's face. As a threat, he fills a shopping basket with goods and forces the boy to pay for them. The bully then eyes his name tag and realizes that he shares the same name as the charming new student. This irritates him heavily and he takes out his anger by repeatedly punching the boy in the face. In the end, Hyun Do takes a photo of a beaten up, unclothed Hyung Sok. It's blackmail if he ever tries to call the police. When they finally leave, the unfortunate cashier sobs in self-pity. Meanwhile, Mrs. Park checks up on him. She's been working multiple jobs to make ends meet for Hyung Sok. He decides to keep his circumstances a secret to prevent his mom from worrying anymore. The following day at school, Jin Seong and his crew brag about beating up a chubby kid last night. With blackmail photo in hand, they mock him, call him a pig, and even insult his parents, who might be dirty hogs like him. Hearing that, Hyung Sok loses his cool. They can humiliate their victim all they want, but never bring his mom into this. Jin Seong is startled by this response, but his head blows off when he sees Mi Jin's worried expression. He squares up and challenges challenges the new student to a fight. Mi Jin tries to stop Jin Seong, but jealousy clouds his judgment. The fashionable Kim Seol Byom tries to intervene but is also repelled. If there's something noteworthy about this guy, it's his boxing ability. Apparently, his punches are lightning quick. Surprisingly, Hyung Sok can clearly visualize his fist and evades all his attacks flawlessly. Everyone gasps in disbelief which infuriates Jin Seong even more. The bully lets off a barrage of punches, but none of them hit the mark. Cornered against a locker, Hyung Sok has nowhere to go. Jin Seong capitalizes on this opportunity and tries to land a clean hit on the Wonder Boy's face. But his punch was caught with a palm? Oohs and ahs emerge from the crowd. If only they knew that Hyung Sok is at wit's end. On the other hand, Jin Seong's frightened that this guy can actually fight better than he does. The camera clicks bring back some trauma in Hyung Sok's head. His rage is immeasurable. As soon as Jin Seong strikes him again, Hyung Sok delivers an earth shattering blow to the gut. His foe falls to his knees, writhing in pain. As the day ends, other classes are beginning to hear about this amazing feat. Hyung Sok is definitely going to get more than what he bargained for. What are Jin Ho Bin from the vocal dance class and Basco from the architecture class up to? One night at the convenience store, Hyung Sok remarks at the difference in how people treat him when he's in his actual self versus the handsome one. Suddenly a thin, jittery, bespectacled boy enters the shop. The kid acts suspiciously and runs away, obviously having shoplifted. Of course, he chases him desperately in order to keep the job. He finally catches up with the culprit in a dark alley only to realize that he's an errand boy of Han Gyul and his friends. He was ordered to steal. In an attempt to shoo him away, Hyun Do pulls out his embarrassing photo and blackmails him. Jang Gi Seok suggests they do something more fun because the picture isn't enough to keep Hyung Sok quiet. The three finally agree on a wicked plan to have Hyung Sok and poor Park Ji Ho fight each other. As soon as it begins, Ji Ho reluctantly hits Hyung Sok. It's obvious that he doesn't want to do this but isn't left with a choice. But before the bullies enjoy the fun of it all, an infuriated Basco interrupts them. The tattooed gangster towers over the three like a skyscraper. He effortlessly lifts Hyun Do by the neck until he whimpers for mercy. As soon as he lets him go, the three stooges run for their lives. The man's expression transitions from a fearsome to a gentle one. He tells the two that working out or building muscle might help. After they thank him for saving them, Ji Ho introduces himself as his classmate. Hyung Sok surprised to discover their classmates. Hearing they're from fashion class, Basco confirms if it's the one with the new student. Ji Ho nods. Tears stream down the man's face as he passionately says, Be sure to tell him don't go messing around. Bro, why are you crying? The next day, Ji Ho is absent from class. Hyung Sok wonders what happened to him. Later in the cafeteria, Han Yul explains that Basco, whose real name is Lee Yunte, is the leader of the Burn Knuckle Gang. Yesterday's bullies inject themselves into the conversation, describing the man as someone who's nice to the weak but hates show offs. Um, like you guys, please be self aware. Speak of the devil, Basco walks through the cafeteria with his gang. Hyung Sok gets so excited to acknowledge him, forgetting he was a different person last night. The leader witnesses Hyung Sok with the three stooges and makes his approach. He thinks Hyung Sok wants to avenge the three who were brutalized the night before. With this, Basco performs his renowned shoulder knuckle grab. It's known for being inescapable for any human. Gravity seems to be working against our pretty boy who's being pushed down onto his seat. Despite Basco's bone-crushing grip still increasing, Hyung Sok only uses one hand to
to lift it off himself. He apologizes for the misunderstanding, not knowing that he's performing a feat deemed miraculous by the strongest men on campus. It's not that he wants to fight though. Byomja steps between them to end the dispute and drags his boss away. Deep inside, he knows Basco would surely have lost in a fight to the stronger man. On the other hand, the three stooges curry favor with Hyung Sook's friends by inviting him out to have some fun. Um, friends? Fun? It's a feeling he's waited all his life for. That night, he meets his so-called friends at a dingy restaurant. Peering inside, he sees the three stooges and Han Yul having alcohol and cigarettes. This isn't the fun he wants, but it's too late to escape as they've already seen him. Worse, Jin Seong is also invited. They offer him a drink and promise to drive him home, but he refuses. After some prodding, they discover he lives alone and assume his place as their hideout. Again, Hyung Sook declines and backtracks on what he said earlier. He's been living with a friend who's a dropout and works at night, so he doesn't want to bother him. They look at the oversized shirt Hyung Sook apparently borrowed from the guy. They put two and two together and assume that he's a massive tattooed sumo wrestler or something. Their imaginations conjure some sort of fearsome character. Anyway, Hyung Sook wonders where Mi Jin is since he knows she's dating the now inebriated Jin Seong. They explain she doesn't like hanging out with them because she's innocent and doesn't like fights, unlike Han Yul. Also, they aren't really together because they went out on only one date. So Jin Seong was probably trying to impress her when he beat the daylights out of the chubby kid. Still, Hyung Sook compliments they look good together. Shaking due to the alcohol, Jin Seong yells at him and tells him he's a great guy. Wait. Huh? Jin Seong scoots over to put him in a buddy-buddy hold, so Hyung Sook takes the chance to apologize for punching him. Luckily, he doesn't hold any grudges. With two powerful men by their side, the three bronze believe they're untouchable, even if Basco interferes again. Speaking of yesterday's events, they blame Jiho for Basco's interruption last night. If only their peon wasn't so useless. But for a good laugh, Hyondo brags about the brawling video they took. Hearing that, Hyung Sook gulps a glass full of soju, grabs Hyondo's phone, and crushes it into pieces with one hand. This catches everyone off guard. Before long, the pretty boy collapses to the ground. Instantly, Hyung Sok wakes up in his original body. He forces himself to sleep but dreams of Han Gyul and his mom instead. When he wakes up again, he's still in the same body. Uh-oh. Now desperate, he scrambles to the restaurant and quickly opens the door to the VIP room. Relief overcomes him when he sees his handsome version is okay. However, his friends look at him quite differently and in a disgusted tone, ask what he's doing here. Hyung Sok tells them he's here to pick up his friend. In order to have a believable alibi, he mentions that the tough room roommate has ordered him to be here. Luckily, they buy this strategic excuse. As they head home, they come across a punching game machine. Jin Seong positions himself and gives Hyung Sook a quick crash course on the proper boxing stance. The boy is confused about why this bully is teaching him how to fight, but watches anyway. A ferocious punch leaves the boxer's arm and it registers a new high score on the machine. Applause. Memories of the pretty boy dodging his punch come back to Jin Seong though. There's no point in an amazing punch if it can be easily dodged. Hey Piggy, make sure you don't get yourself punched anymore, alright? Seeing him a bit nice toward Hyung Sok is refreshing, and then he vomits. Okay, time to go home now, but Hyung Sok stays behind, lays his handsome self on the ground, and faces the machine. Time to give what Jin Seong taught him a try. He punches with all his might and runs home carrying his other body afterwards. Unbeknownst to him, his strike managed to shred the target. Whoa. Out of the nearby shadows emerge Bosco and friends. The leader is shocked to find rips on the pad. Trying his own toughness, he hits it too and resets the highest score. It's clear he isn't content with this despite his gang's cheers. The following day, Hyung Sok returns to his attention-grabbing, gorgeous self. He spots Jiho in the cafeteria and greets him, asking why he couldn't make it to school. Of course, the nerd is bewildered that the school's cutie is talking to him but responds anyway. Much to everyone's surprise, Hyung Sok asks the loser to eat together. Hyung Sok has been through a lot, all because of his unfortunate arrangement of flesh and bones. It's hard to live in a world that prioritizes the superficial, and now that he's gone from being at the bottom, straight to the top of the echelon, he's now in a better position to keep the cycle going, or maybe put a dent in it. Though his appearance has changed, his heart still beats true. Maybe an idol like him can help others see the world better through his weary eyes. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.